I bring to you uh, arch pastoral blessings from His Eminence, Archbishop Alpido Foros of America. He begins with the scripture passage, who will roll rain the stone for us? From Mark chapter 16, verse 3. My beloved brothers and sisters in the risen Lord, we have finally arrived at the mystery of mysteries, and we approach the tomb with the holy myrrh-bearing women. With them we ask, who will roll away the stone for us? The guards have scattered, the garden is empty, and we have brought all our potions and ointments to complete his anointing for death. But he is the anointed one, the Christ, and he has no need of any anointing. He has no need of the stone being rolled away in order to leave death behind. As the young man said to them when they went inside, he is risen, he is not here. So then why was the stone rolled away? My beloved Christians, the stone is rolled away in every telling of the story, but not so that the Lord can emerge, but so that we might submerge. The tomb is opened so that we might enter and die to ourselves, to our egos and to our selfishness. And then we may say, as is chanted in the Paschal Liturgy, Yesterday I was buried with you, O Christ, and today I arise by your resurrection. The tomb is our place of transformation. The tomb is the very center of our hearts, where we can fulfill the ancient saying, if you die before you die, then you won't die when you die. Therefore, dear bro beloved brothers and sisters, let us not ask who will roll away the stone for us, let us make the effort to roll it back ourselves. God will send his angels to help us if we are struggling. But it is within the tomb of dying to ourselves and dying to this world that we are reborn in the resurrection. The stone is heavy, laden with our sins and our heartbreaks. But God forgives all and asks us to do the same. Forgiveness is the power that lifts the stone and paves our way to love. There is a very real resurrection to be had in this life, which leads to life everlasting. The arising in our hearts of love, compassion, and mercy for everyone and everything is the sign that we are truly the children of the resurrection. May this Pascha reveal to you this mystery of mysteries, this gateway to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. With paternal blessings and love, Archbishop Elpido Foros of America. My beloved, I have very little that I could possibly add to His Eminence's beautiful message, but I just would like to include the following. Being a, uh, not native, but certainly native within my heart of hearts of the island of Samos, there's an island close by where today we commemorate a very incredible, truly magnificent individual within the faith who is revered not just on Patmos and Samos, but all over the world. And in fact, I came to find out that I believe it's His Eminence, Archbishop Alpido Foros, who assisted in seeing through the canonization process to make this holy man a saint. And I'm referring to, of course, Saint Amphilochios of Patmos or Amphilochios Macris. I encourage you to spend a little bit of time with Saint Amphilochios today. His writings are widely available throughout the various uh, means of media that we have available to us. But there's 
one message which remains to be constant and remains to be clear and I would say is absolutely and completely reflected by His Eminence's message here. Saint Amphiloichio, of course, was present during a time wherein which we saw the end of an Ottoman occupation and the beginning of our beloved mother country trying to find herself. And in the process of trying to find herself, she was also looking for somebody to blame. It was Saint Amphiloichio himself who preached very much against the violence and hatred of the Ottoman, or rather, of the Turk, and insisted that it is this individual, the one who persecutes us, it is this individual who we should try to love the most, because it is this individual, the one who persecutes us, this is the one who is most beneficial to our salvation. And for that, we owe them a debt of gratitude. And so it is the effort both of Saint Amphilochios, of His Eminence, Archbishop Arpidophoros, and I hope our own effort here as well to preach this gospel of love, this gospel of the resurrection, which is intended not for a small group of people, but for everyone. Let us be bearers of that love, compassion, and resurrection in everything and anything that we do so that we may identifiably be Orthodox Christians. May the risen Lord bring about encouragement, strength, peace, wisdom, and compassion to each and every one of you in every aspect of your lives. Um, after I turn off Big Brother over there, I'll invite you to come forward to venerate the icon of the resurrection. And if you like, you can receive a Paschal egg from me as well. Not from me, from the church. I extend the blessing of the church. That's all I am, just a vessel, okay? So again, God's blessings upon you all. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christos Mamafuka. William Mamafuka. Oh, my man, yes, absolutely. Uh, let's try another one. Christi Ugnagjal. Bertetumjal. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Christus ha resuscitado. En verdad ha resuscitado. Amasicham. Amasicham, very good. Oh, you already, you jumped ahead. You jumped ahead, I was going for Arabic. El Masicham. There we go, there we go, absolutely. Again, uh, I could, we could go on forever, but the point is, again, resurrection for everybody. Christ is risen from the dead by death, trampling down upon death, and to those in the tombs, he has granted.